Okay, so uh, I'm gonna get into our Tiliost fish. So it's gonna be the last lecture that I'm gonna do for this evening. Um, again, so much things to cover, so many things to, to get into. Uh, but we get into the largest, just tremendously diverse group of fish. Uh, so again, just to keep us in perspective, we're still in the bony fish, Osteichthyes, and the ray fin fish, or Actinopterygii, and then we get into this group we call the Tiliostii, or Tiliost fish. I, we, we've heard that term a little bit. There was one question on the pri in the previous exam uh, that dealt with Tiliost fish. Well, this is the type of fish they're talking about. So includes most of the living fish, the extant fish. Over 96% of all fish species fall under the category of uh, these teleos fish. So again, from long skinny fish to tropical fish, from oceanic fish, freshwater fish, just such diversity, right? More species than any other vertebrate lineage. So there's about 23,600 species. Uh, that's a lot of different fish that all fall under this one Tiliost category. So again, as I mentioned, I'm not going to do it justice uh, in, in, you know, in this course. I just want to introduce some characteristics that this group has. Uh, we'll talk about some of the neat, uh, some of the more curious, more uh, unique forms within this category. But uh, again, just, you would have to come back to an ichthyology course uh, where we would spend the whole semester and, and just, again, still not even cover everything that needs to be covered with this category. So a very, very diverse group. So uh, to kind of show us where, where we've been, right? we talked about the Bashirs, the Polypterygians, uh, the Gars, Sturgeons, Paddlefish, um, and we get into this group now we call the Tiliost fish. So Tilios, I'm gonna break into these three categories. Right, so our eels, the bony tongue fish, kind of seems kind of weird, the osteoglossa fish, and then our Tilios fish, salmon and trout and catfish and goldfish and seahorses and puffers and uh, tuna, all the kind of fish that, that you're kind of familiar with would be in this category here. So gives us kind of a, an age range of when these things kind of started to diverge from each other. But yeah, this big teleost group here. So teleostei um, broken into again, three categories, right? The eels, the bony tongues, and then the, the teleost proper, right? that, that group. So teleostei, we get into our eels these very elongated snake looking type of, of fish, uh, sort of fused fins all the way around the body. Very soft, uh, thin skinned, uh, not well protected scale type of fish. Um, and then the osteoglossomorpha. So uh, that translates to bony tongue. So they have a, a, a bone tongue, very different than what um, you or I would have, right, or other species of, of non osteoglossa fish. Um, oh, didn't come out too clear here, right? But um, the moral of this picture here is that all of the larvae start out looking weird. They're like little flattened uh, little fish. So that's why they're all put in the same category the eels. Uh, even some of these fish that are like uh, non-eel looking fish, the tarpons and, and some of these other uh, groups. But again, they all have a shared unique larval stage, kind of a small flattened uh, uh, larval form. Uh, the bony tongue fish, again, a lot of diversity. Arowanas, these elephant snout fish, uh, knife fish, is, again, this, just a lot of diversity, tells you the number of species. Uh, interesting groups. I don't know if you ever went to the El Paso Zoo, but for a long time, I don't even know if they still have it or not. 
in the South American exhibit, uh, they had a very large arowana fish that would just kind of float in there. And again, they eat stuff that falls on the top of the water. Uh, but uh, interesting, interesting groups. So I'm going to spend a whole lot of time with those uh, getting into our, again, teleost group. So the teleostei group. So these, these bony fish um, that are going to have little variations in the fin structure. Uh, but again, just showing you some of these modern fish, right? The, the salmon formies, uh, persiformes, all of our teleost groups. So if you think of a fish in the water, Whatever comes to your brain, I bet it's going to be one of the members of these teleost categories. Right? So, um, clownfish, salmon, uh, marlins, barracudas, dorado fish, uh, angelfish, remoras. So, all of these fall under this category of teleost fish. Um, some of my favorites, I like these little beta fish, right? So betas, um, sea dragons, seahorses, all also fall under this category here. Well, I thought this was something funny. I don't remember. It's late in the evening. Maybe you find this funny. Maybe not. But um, again, plenty of fish in the sea. Sadly, many of them look like that. So... Uh, when we talk about these teleos fish, they all have a similar sort of anatomy. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm oversimplifying because there's 23,000 uh, species, right? More than that. But uh, they're all going to have that sensory, sort of that lateral line. Um, again, that swim bladder. So very, very uh, typical body plan. Some of the fins are going to be in different positions and different structures, but uh, very similar body plan for most of these teleos fish. So there's a lateral line. The gills protected by that operculum. Uh, this is kind of uh, unique too. Uh, I remember as a kid, uh, or maybe you ever you ever went fishing. Uh, the old people would tell you, "Hey, sit." sit there, be quiet. The fish can hear you. They can see you, right? I never knew if that was true, but uh, the more I learned about these, like, man, maybe that is true, right? Uh, they do have this, uh, what we call Weberian apparatus. Uh, the Weberian apparatus basically helps them amplify sound. It's a sound detection system of these fish. Right? So there's these little coils uh, around the brain that helps them to process the sound. So I'm not going to get into all the physics behind this, uh, but yes, they, they, they do have, they don't have the external ears that we're associated or that, that we normally uh, see in other vertebrates, but, but yes, they do have a way of processing sound. Yeah, so there's the brain, the Weberian coils here, the ossicles, and they all lead then to these little sensory cells that transmit information, sound information, auditory information to the brain. So, uh, yeah, who knew? Well, maybe the old people knew that fish can actually hear. And again, just the diversity, just ah, so many unique fish, you know, colors, different colors, different shapes. Uh, we have the flying fish. These fish can actually... Uh, generate enough speed, jump out of the water, and actually sail and glide for, for, for quite a you know, long distance. So, again, so many different unique types of fish here. Um, it gets weirder, right? I don't know if you're fans of the, the marlins, the swordfish. Uh, these guys are super fast. These are the speed racers of the fish world. Right? So, uh, we talk about mako sharks that go about 40 miles an hour. Well, those are slow pokes compared to these. These almost go twice as fast. Imagine an 80 mile an hour fish in the ocean. It's just, uh, again, tremendously fast, sort of agile, uh, just awesome, awesome, awesome uh, fish. Uh, I'll try to show you a nice uh, video link on, on their hunting strategy. Uh, we have fish that basically start dorsal laterally here and they, then they kind of start to 
shift throughout their life and lay flat ventrolaterally on the uh, on, on the ground, right? And it wouldn't make sense to have one eye staring into the soil the whole time. So that eye literally migrates to the other side of the body. This strange, these flounders and um, halibut fish, they, they're just weird ground flat, uh, you know, flat ground dwelling fish uh, that have modified their existence for this 100%. So instead of their mouth opening this way, their mouth opens this way because they started as an upright vertical animal that has now gone uh, lateral like that, horizontal. I'll show you a video on those as well. And then one of my favorite little fish, the archer fish. Right? So um, again, they shoot little streams of water to knock their prey off of twigs and branches and just neat little animals too. So just showing you a little bit of a diversity uh, that is this huge, big category of, uh, of these tiliost fish. So um, let, me, let me pause this here. Uh, I'll get into the reproduction. That's a whole other discussion. Um, it's late and tired, so we'll call it a day here. And we'll continue on with uh, some more lectures throughout uh, tomorrow and the rest of the week here, right? So with that, you'll have a great one, and I'll be seeing you on future lectures, yeah?